Um, hello, everybody. This is a quick slam analysis of I Was Only 19, um, written by John Schumann, um, which is a famous song. Um, but also we're looking at it as a really good example of um, Australian poetry or as an introduction to Australian poetry. Um, a slam analysis involves four key aspects. Uh, the first is to look at the structural features. The second is the language features, that's the L. Next is the effect, which is the emotional impact, okay, mood and tone. And then finally, we look at the meaning. So that's the sort of focus we'll have, predominantly looking at the structure and language, and then making some inferences and having some discussions about um, effect and meaning uh, towards the end. So, uh, very importantly, when we look at any poem, we look at the title. The I Was Only 19, as we'll see, um, plays a really important point and emphasises straight away that this is about a young person's um, experience and the only 19 suggesting someone that was um, too young um, to be involved in the sorts of things they did and saw. Uh, very importantly up the top here is that actually a walk in the light green, an alternative um, title um, that you'll see um, as you look it up and that really it demonstrates that the song is about the soldier's experience and if you have a look here on this link there's a really great link to an article of John Schumann talking about this um, which really reframes some of my thoughts about it so let's go through so the structure here for the first line we'll see mum and dad and Danny this first line positions uh, the author as, or the narrator as a child, okay? By mentioning the mother and father, we see uh, him like that. The passing out of parade, we have this initial imagery, okay? Of celebration, okay? Celebration for the soldiers as they are leaving. And this one, cadets, is a really good reminder, again, of uh, his innocence. It's not very long since he was in cadets, okay? Which is for young, young people. Down here, for those that don't know, the who drew the card, okay, is around the notion of conscription, okay? And so we can talk about that in more detail, but basically an enforced sense of um, joining the army. Um, the key along here, okay, is talking about that they're going on a long vo boat um, voyage. And this one here, which was picked up by a lot of people in class, is actually a really important line, the young and strong and clean. Um, which really sets up that notion of innocence, okay, and the imagery and the juxtapose, juxtapose as we go throughout. And structurally, we have here the first mention of the God help me, I was only 19, which is repeated throughout and plays a really key role in the meaning. And S, okay, the structure here, we have this notion of the being on the choppers, Okay, helicopters, and this is actually foreshadowing the terror of hearing them when he returned home. So, um, throughout, I only just uh, put one here, but you'll actually see there's a lot of Australiana throughout the whole poem. So, for example, this one here, the VB referencing an Australian beer. The language here, okay, we get this notion of the darkness, okay? The darkness of which is really linked with the darkness um, at night um, as well. And that this becomes really important so that uh, when he goes to sleep at night, compounding everything is the fact that the darkness of night is reminding the narrator of the darkness of the jungle. And we see here this notion of the wire still can't get to sleep. Now this one here is a bit of an interesting one, okay? Because we've got the barking M16, and what I'd like you to do, if you've got thoughts on this, we can talk about it in class, or you can comment down below. But we're going to have a talk about, is this an example of personification? Is this an example of onomatopoeia? Is this an example of zoomorphism? Okay. Um, there's a bit of a challenge out there, and see uh, who actually watched the video. Um, feel free to comment down below, um, or let's have a chat about it in class. Um, and we can see here that the narrator is basically talking to a doctor and saying, can you tell me what it means? And it's interesting that perhaps 
in a sense, he's also asking us if we can make sense of his experience. Which is then emphasised down here, the war within yourself. So they've gone to battle and these men have come home and are now facing a war within themselves, the, uh, the memories and the impact on them and the, the way it still affects them day to day. Um, so, so up until now, we've basically had the narrator telling us the story, okay, of a young man that's gone to war, and but we now have this really horrific notion of Frankie, okay. But if you read that article above, you'll actually see this is based very much on a true story. Um, a Frankie kicked the day the man, the day that mankind kicked the moon. So kicking the mind, as we've discussed, um, you know, means that he's trod on a mine. And, and had a horrific injury as a result of that, okay, resulting in his death. Um, there's this juxtaposition, okay, which is a contrast of, a, a contrast, putting two contrasting ideas side by side, kicking the moon, okay? So a horrific image of uh, someone being blown up contrasted with the celebration of the moon landing, okay? That, you know, maybe makes us think about where was people's attention and, sort of, to me anyway, really reinforces that sense of isolation. And interestingly here, all the way through it's been God help me, I was only 19, all of a sudden we have, he was going home in June. And this change of structure makes us focus on the tragic loss um, and the idea that he, like many others, never got to go home. And throughout, you'll see this throughout, we can see that I can still hear. So this is reinforced repetition in different ways um, that this pain for him is uh, ongoing. And sort of in relation to all of it is that they didn't know what to expect. So we have this imagery here um, that, you know, perhaps they thought um, they would go or, or, or come back as heroes or, um, all those sorts of things, which, you know, I think we've talked about class, so ultimately people that serve our country are um, are heroes, um, but they certainly weren't expecting um, the terror. And there's actually a direct contrast here if you look at the way the language is structured, okay? The mud and blood and tears, I see a direct contrast between that and earlier where we talked about the young and strong and clean. Um, and so here, uh, this is uh, all the way throughout, but just emphasising that really um, there seems to be a sense of someone suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, okay, where the horror um, of what he's faced is now being linked um, with his day-to-day -day, uh, life um, and inability to sleep, like we said, going back to the, the darkness of night. And that here, I mentioned the foreshadowing previously, this is sort of where it pays off. So. We had, they were on the choppers before, and now the Channel 7 chopper, okay, so just the, the TV helicopter, um, still chills him um, to this very day. And this rash, I'm actually still looking into it a little bit. I'm not sure if there's something specific associated with the Vietnam War here, um, but definitely the notion of um, anxiety and stress rashes um, is also a clear one. And at the end, he says, again, ask us, can you tell me what it means? God help me, I was only 19. And as we come to the end of the poem, again, um, the reiteration of um, the fact that so sort of young people um, had to face this and um, perhaps asks um, of, you know, um, to what extent young people um, should have to be involved uh, in these sorts of things. And perhaps um, if they do, um, what sort of support can be provided for them um, when they come home? So in the SLAM poetry, we talked about the, uh, uh, the SLAM analysis. So the structure and the language are the S and the L. The A stands for effect, okay? And here we have the tone and the mood. So the tone is generally associated with the speaker's attitude or the narrator's attitude, the writer's attitude. Um, and that, to me, these are some of the words that could be there. So perhaps a sense of bitterness 
um, unhappiness and um, perhaps some resentment about having to go there in the first place, perhaps a sense of anger. Um, but more so than anything, I, I sort of see these, these three. So a real kind of mournful tone, mournful um, for the loss of his friends and also mournful for um, his, you know, what, what he experienced and what he still experiences. A sense of confusion, okay, about what's happening to him now, what's happening in his mind, but perhaps also confusion about why he, why he was involved in the first place, why him, and definitely a sense of, of tragedy, um, a tragic um, experience. Uh, the mood, the impact on the audience, okay, um, I definitely sense a sense of ha ha hauntingness, um, heartbreak, um, distress, um, futility may be slightly too strong, okay, futility is often about sort of a meaninglessness and a waste, um, but there's certainly a sense um, of, of waste of, of young life. Um, and then we come down to the key ideas, all right? So the physical and mental impact of war, this is in a long line of, of poems about these sorts of topics, okay? The loss of innocence um, throughout, and then I think probably uh, most importantly is the actual awareness raising of mental illness experienced by soldiers. So, uh, thank you very much for taking the time um, to for watching this. Okay, uh, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe to my channel for future uh, educational uh, class-based uh, content, and um, we look look forward to discussing uh, much more analysis with you in the future. Heathcote out.